looks like it's a good installation. One of the problem to have is the fuel pump located here is not in this position. It should really be laying flat like this with the vent hole uh, on the impulse line facing down. The other problem that you've got is this has the chrome uh, air filter cover. Um, these uh, covers have been reported, uh, they're glued on and they report that the glue comes off and then they exit and of course when they exit, they exit into the propeller. The other thing is that the way the aircraft, the air filters are safety wired. The reason for the safety wire is to prevent the air filter from entering the prop if it comes loose. It falls off. The problem that you have is although this maintains the air filter onto the carburetors, the clamps, which are the reason that it came off, still enter the propeller. So the recommended way is to take this line here down underneath the clamp and then back to the air filter. And then that way, if the air filter clamp is loose and the air filter does come off, it's still actually held in place by the safety wire. Now, the other problem that you have here is, again, you see these little screws. Now, the screws can, will have a tendency to vibrate out, and when they vibrate out, again, they go through the propeller. So what you can do is you take a little bit of silicone, you put a little bit of silicone on that, or uh, some people take duct tape and put duct tape across it. Now this is the installation of one of the exhaust systems and you can see that this exhaust system has two clamps, a clamp here and a clamp here, and this prevents the uh, springs from, uh, because it doesn't use springs, from entering the exhaust system when they break. Now one of the problems that you have in some installations is it's very difficult to check your uh, fan belt or fan belt tension. So what you can do is you take your cover off and you remove this tit here that uh, covers the belt. Now with the engine turned off at any point in time you can come in and uh, check your belt tension. That's on the 503, 377 and 447 Rotax engines. Now this is an Ivoprop installation, a tube blade. The problem that you have here is they haven't installed the movement tape. And without uh, the movement tape, if the bolts were to come loose, you have no way of telling it and uh, potential uh, results are that the uh, propeller could fail. So there should be a set of movement tape here, here, and on the same uh, side on the other side. Now this is a uh, 503 Rotax engine, but it uses the same style of exhaust, and you can see that we've silicone the springs. The problem with this is, the silicone, the place that it breaks is it breaks right here at the ends. So where you really need the silicone is right there. This will stop the harmonic resonance and help prevent the harmonic resonance, but the place where you need the silicone is right there and there. Now this spring here is under tension. Actually, it should face just like this one here. This is a spring that is more likely to break because it's not installed properly. Now this is the style of air filter that we want to use, and this again is the uh, way that it's clamped. Again, you can see that if the air filter comes off, the clamps still enter the propeller. So again, what you want to do is just run the safety wire underneath the clamp and back to the carburetor and uh, that uh, prevents the air filter clamp from entering the prop. And you can see that this individual has put duct tape to prevent the uh, bolts uh, from the uh, cowl uh, from entering the exhaust system. Now this is the proper installation for the fuel pump. You can see the fuel pump is mounted above the impulse line. It's mounted with the impulse hole, which is a little vent hole under here facing down. Um, this line is a thick walled line, and all of the system is clamped. Also, you can see that this has got a, a choke here that isn't being used, and the pilot has um, put a rubber uh, socket over it to, to prevent water from entering. Now, this is a GSC prop. And the GSC prop, if installed correctly, is supposed to have a uniform gap just like this all the way around in the propeller. And you can see on this one, it has. If the uh, prop is clamped too tight, that results in uh, the blades uh, deforming in at the hub and uh, potential for failure. The other things that this pilot has done, rather than your safety wire, is he's put the bolts all the way through and put nuts on the other uh, side lock nuts, which uh, help. Uh, prevent the uh, bolts from coming loose and uh, the prop coming off. Now also, if you're using a GSC prop, in this hub here, you you have to install a set of dowels, and the dowels take the strain uh, from the, or the shock loading uh, uh, away from the uh, bolts that are used to retain the, uh, or hold the propeller onto the uh, gearbox. 
Now this pilot has installed an electric fuel pump to assist the, the vacuum fuel pump and also in case of vacuum or fuel pump failure. And also it helps um, when you have a, a gas tank that's mounted below the engine and then the engine's been turned off for a while, it helps bring fuel uh, up to the carburetors uh, rather than turn the engine over to bring the fuel to the carburetors. And this is a proper installation in that the uh, pilot has run two separate systems to the carburetors. That is, that he has his fuel pump, which is located up in here, dual fuel pump, uh, as his vacuum line. And then from his pump, he's running one system to the carburetors from his vacuum pump. And then from his electric pump, he's running a second system to the carburetors. So that he's pumping fuel directly to the carburetors from both systems rather than in series where he would be pumping through the, the one pump. And if this diaphragm were to fail, then he's actually pumping fuel directly into the engine. Now this is a 582 Rotax engine. Uh, this is uh, the pre-Blue Head series, but the, basically the engine is the same. Um, on both systems, you have this rotary valve tank. And you can see this is a pusher configuration. Anything coming off of this engine is going to go into the tank. You see there's a little... Uh, tie down spot here and if you were to look real closely at the, the top of this cap you'll find that there's a hole in the cap and what you do is you simply safety wire the cap to the uh, tank and that prevents the cap from entering the propeller. Now this exhaust gasket here is leaking. Now, there are two things that could cause this. One is that the exhaust system has been removed and then uh, replaced and the gaskets haven't uh, been replaced because you can only use these gaskets once. Once they're compressed, you try to use them again, you can't. The other thing is that the ignition on this side, uh, possibly a spark plug is going bad, or it could be that it's had a cold seizure and the fuel isn't burning efficiently on the one side and thus is leaking out through the exhaust system. Now, if you're installing a heat sending unit on a Rotax 582, you want to install this heat descending unit in the center of the cylinder head. A lot of people will install the heat sending unit out on one of the uh, rat hoses in this area here. The problem is that this will cause a 30 degree difference in the reading on a gauge up on the dash going from here to here. So the proper unit, the proper place to install the heat sending unit is here. Now if you're setting up an oil pump on a Rotax 582 engine, this arm here activates the oil pump and there's a line on the arm and a line on the casting and those two lines at an idle are supposed to be lined up. Now if you're bleeding your oil pump for the first time, you use this bleed screw here, you remove the bleed screw or loosen it off, you drain all of the uh, air out of the lines, then you have to turn your engine over and you have to eliminate all of the uh, you have to eliminate all of the air on the lines. It's supposed to be solid oil going into the engine. Now here you can see the cap uh, on the rotary valve tank uh, and the way that it's safety wire. You see the little hole in the cap and how it goes back onto the tank. This is a Rotax 582 here in the blue head style. These are the spark plug caps. Now these caps should be very difficult to remove as you can see. And this is the wrong style of spark plug to use here. This cap here has got an aluminum head on it. And the problem that you have with the aluminum, as you can see here, it's already starting to wear. When it wears, it makes a loose fit for this. The, the type of spark plug you want is called, it has a steel cap on it. They're a little more expensive, but they don't wear, and the cap stays on. The type of plug that you want to use, you can see that it has a steel cap. It cannot be removed. It's part of the spark plug, and it doesn't wear like the aluminum caps do. So what happens when one of these exhaust springs breaks at this little tip right here and comes off? Well, it goes through the propeller. And where does it go through the propeller? Well, directly in line where the spring is located. Now, if you look carefully at these carburetors, you'll see that they have a, a little bit of an incline going down. Now, when Rotax ships the engine, that's the way they're supposed to be. When you put the engine and you invert it, like on a Challenger, you actually have to take these intake manifolds here and turn them around so that when the engine's upside down, you have the same angle. And again, you can see that this aircraft here has got a piece of safety wire. This one here is actually holding the chrome on. There's nothing actually holding the 
air filter. Now, if you've got one of the older Rotax engines, one of the problems that you're going to have is the positioning your probe. This probe is supposed to be located 100 millimeters from the face of the piston, which means you actually have to come in, measure from the face of the piston, and it's supposed to be located 100 millimeters from the face of the piston. This location here looks to be wrong. The other thing is that this probe sticks into the exhaust. It cannot touch the bottom of the pipe. You actually, in most cases, have to put little spacers underneath this so that it, this is sitting in the air uh, in the middle of the pipe. Now, on the newer ones, there, there's a, already a space there uh, for the probe, and they use a different style of probe. Now, if you've got this type of probe, one of the things that you should do is these clamps have a tendency to break so what you should do is put a little bit of silicone right across here just so that if it does break, it's held together. So this is again a GSC prop, and here's where the gap is supposed to be, and there is no gap. This uh, is a problem. If you, you have to go to the GSC website, and they give you the, the correct way to uh, torque a prop in the correct spacing. Now this is a Rotag B reduction drive. And there is an update on this vent tube here. Uh, new vent caps uh, uh, prevent uh, the uh, gear oil from being uh, sucked out of the drive. Now, with the tail on this airplane, with the whole airplane level, you know, the level that is supposed to be in the gearbox, which is uh, generally 90 gear oil, or you can use synthetics, but the level when the gearbox is facing up like this, you take this plug out. You install oil into the hole until it comes out of this plug, and then you put the plug back in. So that's the level. Now, when the gearbox is reversed, this now becomes your level. So that uh, if you were to reverse this, take the plug out of the bottom, put this, and so on and so forth, this is now the level of your uh, gearbox. Hey, Robert, are you hungry? Now, it's very important that you have these. This is, doesn't have a rubber grommet on it. But the rubber grommets are very important because what happens is a day like today where it's raining, you get water will follow this cable right down into the bottom of the carburetor. So it's very important that you have the proper rubber grommets onto the top of the carburetor. If you're not using the primer lines, this is where the primer would normally hook up to. You have to make sure that this primer uh, hole is uh, plugged. And if you, even if you have these plugs, you have to be very careful that the ultraviolet light hasn't deteriorated in the plug. Uh, if that plug comes out, you will be running on a lean fuel mixture on the side that uh, it's deteriorated. Now here you can see the carburetors, you can see the engines in an inverted installation, and you can see that the intake sockets have not been changed around. The carburetors, as I say, are supposed to pull, uh, face in a little bit of a downward angle. These ones here are actually facing in an upward angle. Uh, this is the uh, new style of uh, cap. And you can see there's little tabs here, and you can safety wire it onto the top of the gearbox. This is the new style of probe that uh, Rotax now supplies with the uh, and this is the new style of probe. And the position is right, and you just have to make sure that you, when you push this in here, this is move, this is able to move up and down, but it doesn't touch the other side of the. Uh, uh, exhaust manifold. Now if you're flying on a uh, C or an E reduction drive, this is an E reduction drive here, and you notice that you have 90 gear oil in this area right here, it means that you have a seal going uh, in the uh, gearbox and it should be replaced. Now this is an E gearbox and again if you were filling it up you would remove your top cap you would remove this screw here, you would put the fluid in the top until the oil just starts to come out of this line here and that gives you the, uh, the correct level for the gearbox with the airplane uh, uh, sitting in a level position. Now this is the type of spark plug cap and what you want to do is you see how this cap here moves up and down? It's supposed to be very very snug. It's supposed to be like this one here. See I can't move it at all. Very hard to come off. But these ones here, see? This one here, like I say, moves up and down freely, and if you pop it off, you see the arcing. See, this cap here has the aluminum 
top on it rather than the steel top, and you can see the arcing that is developing in the spark plug. Flying on an engine that's out in the open like this, the problem that you have is you have to remember this engine is getting 65 70 miles an hour of air going across it. Anything in a wire like this, or a hose, or anything like that, will be moving because the air coming across the engine is doing this to it. And over a period of time, what's going to happen is, for example, this rubber tube, well, it's going back and forth and it's going to break right at the, at the base. Or if you've got a wire here, the wire is going to be going back and forth like this, and it's going to uh, separate from the, uh, for example, this is a ground. You would no longer have a ground if that wire were to uh, break. Now this is a Volkswagen uh, Sirocco uh, radiator. It's a radiator that's used uh, quite extensively in the industry, and one of the problems is it, it does a real good job. In fact, it does, in some cases, too much coolant. So this gentleman here has put tape around the bottom. Now, he is also has a little unit right here that's connected to a uh, thing at the bottom here, and he's got a cable at the front, and he can turn this, and as he turns it, it blocks off more air into the radiator. Now, another way of doing it is to put a valve in here, ball check valve, and then you just open and close the valve using your uh, heat gauge to tell you what temperature you want to run at. So, for example, if I was running at 140 degrees, I would close it off a little bit, and that will bring my temperature up. And if I turn a heater on, for example, I've got a heater in the system, then that allows me to control the temperature by putting a little check valve in here with an arm and running a cable uh, like this off of it. Now you can see that we've got a battery mounted up in the nose of this airplane. Uh, it could be for a white and balance problem, it could be where the manufacturer wants it to be. That's not the problem that we have here. What we're using is we're using a battery that has acid in it, hydrochloric acid. And if you're ever in an accident, that hydrochloric acid has a possibility that it could come and uh, uh, hit the pilot or the uh, passenger. So if you're mounting something like this, uh, rather than use this uh, motorcycle style battery, if you use a gel cell like what they use in burglar alarms and stuff like that, you'll uh, be a lot safer uh, than using the, uh, the acid battery. And also you have to remember that the, the farther the battery is up in the front of the airplane, farther from the engine, the less uh, voltage and amperage you're going to be able to uh, put to your electric start. So you generally want to have that battery as close as you can to the uh, engine itself. One of the other problems is that if you did have an accident, that cable coming from there all the way back here is live. So if you had a fuel tank or something rupture, uh, there's a possibility that that, ground, or that uh, live cable could uh, touch something ground out and be a problem. So you really want to get the, the battery as close to the engine, close to the starter as possible. Uh, mount it so that it is, in, say, in a plastic container of some sort, like a... Uh, protect any of the power ends. Uh, anything that's got a positive end on it, uh, either covered in silicone or covered in plastic or uh, rubber of some sort so that uh, it can't ground out on